Next to the stage, I would like to welcome a, a, a dear colleague, Einar Gunnar Thorotsen. He is an expert at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. We work uh, closely together uh, on a daily basis, so he uh, is going to tell you a little bit about the roadmap for continued digital transformation of Iceland's public sector. Welcome, Einar. Pak. Well, thank you all. Uh, it's been a long day, so uh, to begin with, please stand up for 10 seconds. Stretch your leg. Ah, yeah, exactly. Have a sip of water, or a cup of coffee, or a cracker. But you may sit down. So, uh, wow, it's um, quite tough, uh, you know, presenting after hearing all the presentations about what our colleagues in the different countries are doing. I mean, obviously we are doing similar things and it literally stems from this fact. Uh, everyone has been talking about this, but I mean, this, this is the adoption rate of EIDs in Iceland. And you may wonder why it's over 100%. Well, it's uh, for a simple reason, because at any given time, give or take 50,000 people are registered out of the country. So we are working with 95%-ish of um, uh, those with the Icelandic uh, social security number uh, that have access to, to EIDs. Uh, I'd like to point out one interesting figure, which is the figure on the far right, which is the group 70 plus and older talking about inclusion or exclusion, I think we're in a pretty good spot, at least here in, in, in Iceland. But um, um, this is essentially the, the roadmap for, for Iceland going forward. Um, I'm gonna pretty much, uh, as you can see, services for all life events, um, scale up of the services, standardization, um, you know, this is what, every guy, what all the countries are doing. Um, but these are roughly 10 focus areas in the next few years that uh, we are either currently working on or are in the early phases of. Uh, so very briefly, I'm going to talk about most of them. I mean, digital inclusion, services for all, leave no one behind. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful vision that we uh, most certainly are striving for but it's becoming more uh, increasingly difficult because of the high adoption of uh, EIDs. Uh, because it crystallizes the individuals that are left behind. For instance, the groups of those, are the, of those that, let's say, are physically or mentally disabled in, in any aspect, uh, we can't leave them behind, but the needs of those groups are very different. Someone who can't hear or who can't see, that's a very different approach we have to, uh, we have to present to, to those groups. Uh, but we are constantly working on this, and, and actually there are both in the Nordic Baltic perspective and here in Iceland, we are mapping what we, we, what, what we can do. Well, surprise, life events. Um, we are literally on the same track as everyone. Um, uh, I bet Andre will um, inform the team that he, they will copy all of the, the, the finish list, which was absolutely fantastic. So I'm not going to dwell on this, but we are on, literally on the same journey. Now, standardization of services and the omnichannel experience. Wow. I mean, you remember those days when you went to the bank? And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when you went to the bank again, uh, do we have any of this in government today? Uh, perhaps not exactly like this, but we most certainly don't have this, right? So what we need to do is we need to uh, meet the customer where he or she needs us. And uh, we want to, of course, ma make it an open space. It needs to be welcoming. It needs to, we need to advise people. If you're not digital, don't have the capabilities, we'll sit down with you and help you, guide you, etc., etc. Makes a lot of sense, but, you know, we're government, it takes time. Uh, but we are indeed, we are, we are doing our best. And obviously, uh, this sort of an approach towards customers in conjunction with um, 
um, a centralized portal should meet the needs of the most. Um, and in particular, with when we talk about services for all, some kind of a representative solutions or a power of attorney that uh, can guide, uh, uh, that can aid us in that. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this a lot because uh, Andre talked about this, uh, the phase that the digital Iceland is, is, is going through. Literally, uh, you can see there is, there is the potential of a very steep curve. We'll see how that develops. We don't know. But it's based on the core digital services that the Digital Iceland team has, um, has developed. Now, these are the things that, you know, we're currently working on. But the next phase is really about, like everyone has been talking about, is data. It's data, it's data, it's data. In a, in a perfect world, the data just flows through, uh, through government. Um, the customer, or the citizen, should not supply any agency with uh, information because once upon a time, he or she uh, put that data into the system. So we should know who you are. We shouldn't have to ask you every single time you're touching the, the government. And of course, we, at the moment, we're working with, uh, with XROAD uh, to securely transport that data. Um, and what kind of data are we talking about? We're talking about personal data. This is just a screenshot from, my, um, uh, from the data portal. But more importantly, or not more importantly, but also importantly, is it just data about stuff that's going on. And why do we want to do that? Of course, we, well, we want to make better decisions. We want to make better informed decisions in order for, uh, for all the different government bodies, and particularly government or, or, or the government itself, and the Ministry of Finance, and that in, in this case is uh, distributing the money towards the, the, the ministries. But in general, you, you, you get the gist. Um, now, all of the centralized or the di core digital services that uh, the Digital Iceland team has developed doesn't really make any sense unless there is capability on the, on the other end, right? So what the Ministry of Finance, which kind of owns the ICT of, uh, of, uh, of, of government, you know, needs to have a clear vision, which we believe we have. We have leadership. You have listened to the, to the minister, which has a very, he has a, he has a clear, clear vision and gives a very strong mandate, uh, for example, to the Digital Iceland team. And uh, we try to support the agencies or the, the government system with some kind of a legal framework, which we are working on. We already have one law and, and, and at least one or, or others uh, coming up and supplying the, them with practical tools and, and, of course, the digital core services. So it's really about removing the silos, um, assisting with the culture, um, help the agencies work in an agile environment, help them make mistakes. So make mistakes and you know, fail fast and learn from them. Then we measure and then we view the progress. Very important thing is uh, updating the legacy systems. So uh, this is essentially a, uh, the result of, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what I should call it, uh, a query or a, you know, uh, it was a, it was a somewhat complicated uh, uh, thing that we did, but we literally mapped out the agencies and put some kind of a legacy score. So the importance of uh, the system or the, the, the IT systems for, um, uh, for the agencies and, and gave them a, a, a legacy score. So we know that, you know, somewhere here should be the priority. The more important the, uh, the, um, uh, the system is and the higher the legacy score, it makes sense for us to prioritize here. So this is one of the things that we're working on as well. Another thing which uh, has also been talked about is, you know, legacy workflows. You know, it makes no sense if we're digitizing a process that we maintain the old process. 
That makes no sense. So we need to some extent, you know, stop doing the way we used to do it instead of the new process. And the initial, uh, our initial me measurements show that once we accomplish that, the new process is at least four times more efficient. But it's also <laughs> very important to, if you don't close the old process, okay, or, the, or your current process is, is just rubbish, the cost of failure or delivery failure, you know, let's say a, a customer, uh, you know, he tries to do something, he can't do it digitally, you know, he tr pick up, picks up the phone, tries to do that three times, okay, that doesn't happen, oh, okay, no, sorry, no, sorry, John is not in the office, can you call tomorrow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The cost is 20 times than compared to uh, a smooth digital process. And how many institutions do you think actually know how much their top three services actually cost? Not in absolute terms, but in cost of a delivered service. Just think about that. Those of you from the agencies, your top most used services, how much does it cost per delivery? If you don't know that, know that, know that I would uh, please come talk to us because we have some guidance on how to measure that. Because what we're trying to avoid, of course, is this, right? We want to move data, not people, and certainly not paper, right? Um, proactive services, very important. We've seen some good stuff from that, uh, examples from that, you know. Is your tax statement correct? We saw that from, from Estonia, for example. You know, reminder, hey there, you know, it's time for your car to get inspected. The third one is, uh, is my favorite. Uh, that's the last, uh, when, you th when you turn 35, it's actually the last right you obtain as a citizen in Iceland. You were allowed by the age of, age of 35 to run for president. Why shouldn't the government or the, or the state just inform you of doing that, etc. Etc. This, uh, I believe, this is. Uh, we will only see more of this because, you know, uh, who doesn't like to be reminded of, of stuff. Um, well, a lot has been said about this. Uh, thank you, Lucas, for taking it into a into a kind of a bigger perspective as well. Uh, the meetings we had, have had this morning and yesterday absolutely convinced me the importance of working with the Nordic and Baltic countries. We share a fantastic infrastructure. We share the mentality. Uh, I think Anne-Marie actually said we actually like each other. Uh, so I would say it's almost a shared belief system. But in what really drives us or, or drives us, what kind of connects us, is trust. We have every opportunity to actually be the leader, especially in a European context. Just think of the EU wallet, the cross-border services, the central population registers that we have. Wow, Mid middle and or central and, and southern Europe, they certainly don't have that. It's a huge opportunity for us to actually uh, take an advantage and, and let the, uh, the rest of Europe actually follow us. And I would say further on the horizon, it is just you know, restructuring of how we operate, um, how we prioritize, how we update our legacy systems, that, that the system in general, not only individual system, but we as a whole are fit for purpose. And of course, resilience is probably the, the most in, in important uh, thing. With that, I thank you. <laughs>